Jason and Jenny, it's great to have you with us this evening. Great to be here. Yeah. Good stuff. Good um, I've known you for a few years now, and uh, we share a little bit of a common backstory, but we're going to get onto that in a little while. Uh, but to begin with, can you just tell us whereabouts you are in the country? We're in Lincolnshire, um, so sort of middle of England, towards the east coast, not far from the town of Sleaford and Bourne. So we're in between, if you know the cities, we're between Peterborough and Lincoln. So that's where we are. Okay, certainly not Peterborough and Lincoln, yeah. Um, and are, are, you, are you from there originally, both of you, or somewhere else? Yeah, we, we've we always lived around the area. So um, we actually, when we got married, we only moved kind of a few miles from where we both kind of grew up. So, yeah. Well, yellow Same area. Yeah. Lincoln, the yellow bellies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe one day, you know, you'll you'll move up to Yorkshire, perhaps, but we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. <laughs> um, yeah. So what, what do you do there in Lincolnshire? Uh, well, I passed a, um, a, a chapel, a small evangelical church in Bourne, um, also by vocation, also I have to run my own business as well. Jen works. I work part-time, yeah. so just to help to... Um, supplement yeah, the ministry just right? to support Jason yeah and, and family you have children we have four and we we also have an extra which is a nephew as well now so uh, we have three boys girl three boys married um, Jasmine is has just finished at York Bible College and Billy is 15 um he's recently come to the door so yeah. yeah which is incredible yeah yeah and we have th three grandchildren and one one pending due, due any day <laughs> wow we you guys don't look old enough to uh have grandchildren that's for sure right. um have to stop. yeah <laughs> indeed now I understand you met each other while whilst you were at school, but be, before we, yeah. we talk about that, a little bit about your upbringing. Perhaps with you first, Jenny. Were you brought up in a Christian home? No, it was far from that. Um, there wasn't any boundaries as such, apart from having to be in by a certain time, and um, so yeah, no boundaries. Not really brought up with any religious background. Um, yeah. Yeah, atheist household really is okay. the best way to describe it. <laughs> and what about for you, Jason? Um, mum and dad were believers of a sort. They had, my dad particularly, had been involved in Pentecostal churches and the revival sort of, uh, sort of faith healing movement, I guess, in the sixties. So he'd been saved at some crusade and. But they never really followed through on their their faith, so I was I, I was brought up believing there is a God, um, but really that was about it. I did go to the Anglican Church on and off um, because I was searching, but I didn't have uh, a ground in in Christianity. So, would you say for both of you then that you you never really thought much about God when you were young? Never never really sort of figured much in your life. I used to go to the local um, like Sunday school with my friend um, when I was about 12. I used to stay around and the, the conditions were that I went to Sunday school, which was which actually I really enjoyed. Um, I suppose as a youngster, I lived down the Fen, so we used to often just go for like long walks and often I used to just go walking on my own and some of the things that I used to think about were were things like, you know, what happens when you when you get old and die, where do you go? Um, and I used to think of, I used to be thinking about when I got married and that when I got married, it would be for life, that, you know, I would be with my husband forever as long as, you know, till we died. So although I wasn't brought up kind of, in a religious house, I think those things, they're there, aren't they? Or maybe it was just something that I picked up from Sunday school, I don't know, but 
I did really enjoy Sunday school. There was something there that I really, really enjoyed. So. Yeah. And what about you then, Jason? Did did you have those deep thoughts as well about getting married and so <laughs> okay. thinking about life beyond <laughs> death and stuff? Well, I was more uh, as a as a young lad. I was into more into uh, football, but then also um, just just creepy crawlers. Mm. You know, um, I used to I used to I like I like creation. I like well, I wouldn't call it that. We'd call it nature. Um, going out and just um, finding things and trees and but um, apart from that I did as I grew a bit older into my um, probably age 10 11 was really interested in ghosts and UFOs and Loch Ness Monster and Arthur C. Clarke and all that sort of stuff. Oh that's really interesting isn't it you know Jenny's sort of thinking about marriage and, and, and life and death you're thinking about ghosts and creepy crawlies and UFOs that's uh, <laughs> That's the, the male and female <laughs> mind right there, I think. Um, so you met at school. And uh, at what age did you meet yeah. at school? How old well, were you? We kind of, I was, I say we met at school. We knew each other at school. Right. Um, but we didn't actually start going out until I left school. So um, I would have been... 16 and Jason would have been Jason would have still been at school but I would have already left he would have been 15 that's when right. we started going out so you you're after a toy boy really Jenny that's what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you got one there you go now, I understand as well Jason for you around that sort of time um moving away from from ghosts and UFOs and creepy crawlers and stuff you you got into the wrong crowd would that be a right way of putting it? And, and what was that like? What was happening? Um, the wrong crowd, I guess, from uh, school onwards, really, up to becoming a Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. um, it was this, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just. Well, I guess a lot of kids go through the same identity crisis, I guess, and uh, find solace in in the crowd. Uh, yeah and so and jenny you were going out with him at this time yeah we used to hang around with the same friends so uh well, yeah we, we were we were mods yeah so we, we, we were mods, mods. We used yeah. to go up to scarborough yeah. and that sort of go on the rallies and go on the rallies. so did, yeah. did you have a a lambra or a lambretta or a vespa or something like that or? Uh, a vespa a vespa oh wow proper yeah. mods yeah Proper mods, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, nice. uh, Jason's hanging around with the wrong crowd. How is that affecting you, Jenny? I mean, would you say you were as well, or was it just him? Um, I suppose it kind of just started, I suppose. So, because we had the same friends, we were all hanging around together. And then, and then we kind of, I suppose, stopped. Once we got married, we stopped doing those things well we we we, we stopped we were you know we were no longer once we got married we no longer were involved in in uh the sort of modism um but we did you yeah. know with that without an identity and by that time i already had strong view on religion um i i i continued in the crowd yeah um the reason for that is because i didn't see any purpose to life and I felt that I had to have everything now. Um, I looked at my father, who was a land worker, and had worked all his life, whether that be picking potatoes or cleaning out ditches or very heavy manual work. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to do that for, you know, 40 years and then drop dead. I, I want it all now. And so I, I, I had, uh, by that time, which would be in my early 20s, I already already had a, um a view of the world a world view which had been formed really through my uncle mm -hmm. and jenny you told me that almost out of desperation you you turned to god for help i did and that was partly because by this point i mean we got married when we was 19 so it was the day before my 20th birthday 
we had Scott, um, first son at 21, second at 23, and on it goes. Um, the desperation was because I, I just wanted my husband. Um, I knew, I knew from what his uncle had kind of taught him. I knew that the only, I suppose it was part selfish in a way. The, the only thing that he would listen to would be to the word. Of God. And I wanted, I wanted, um, I didn't want our marriage to end. I wanted to put it right. And I just, out of desperation, turned to God and just asked for his help. And <laughs> that's when the JWs came knocking, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So, um, so you've yeah. mentioned you've mentioned your uncle Jason a few times. Um, so he he was a Jehovah's Witness. My uncle uh, had been a Catholic, and then in the early seventies he um, had the JWs come round. He read um, the two Babylons, um, and he felt that the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church were apostate. And so the JWs, you know, when they came around and sort of confirmed it and they used the Bible, he became a JW in 75 because, of course, in 1975, they they felt that the uh, 6,000 years of human history was would end. And the um, implication was that the Paradise Earth would begin. So he did all that. But then he fell away in 76, mostly because of his wife, who really was very against it and... You know, they were very, I don't know what they're like so much now, but they were very strict then, um, you know, and they told him to leave his wife because she wouldn't. Um, she liked Christmas. She loved much. Christmas. She wouldn't <laughs> conform to his, you know, he, she put the tree up. He didn't want the tree up. Oh, but anyway, dear. he was the one who, he was the one who, who noticed I had an interest in uh, the supernatural mm -hmm. and also an interest in the Bible. And it, it was he who began to indoctrinate me most weekends, actually, because I was so curious um, with with um, Jehovah's Witness teaching. So although he fell away, he remained uh, in his mind uh, a, um, a Jehovah's Witness, and he taught me. And really, he taught me there were, was only one choice, which was to become a Jehovah's Witness or die at Armageddon. And because I couldn't convince Jen to become a witness, then I felt, well, I might as well do whatever I want and die at Armageddon. Because in there, in, in the Jehovah's Witness teaching, they teach annihilationism, which is the when you die, that's it, you're finished. So um, I had nothing to lose, really. So this is interesting. So your JW uncle was teaching you about what the Jehovah's Witnesses believed. You were interested in that. Jen, you, you weren't. No. But then, then after this, these JWs knocked on your door after your prayer. Is that right, Jenny? Yeah, I actually started a Bible study with them without Jason. <laughs> I kind of sprang it on him when he kind of appeared and I said to him that I'd started a Bible study with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I mean, my intentions was to put our marriage back on course. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I, I just I wanted to, I just wanted to learn about the, the things of God to actually, you know, the Bible verses mm. to put everything back on track. So, Jason, you you heard about this? Did you end up joining Jenny then, or how, how did that work? How did you both get involved? Or, you know, um, Jen had had a serious car accident when she was sixteen, and I thrust all these Watchtower books on her. She rejected it, and all of a sudden, she wanted to have a study. So I was. Um, uh, you know, I'd already got myself in a real mess by then, so I wasn't particularly keen to get involved. And I knew what it would mean. I knew that it would mean basically giving up what I was doing, changing my whole lifestyle. And the very first time we went to the Kingdom Hall, I said to Jen, yeah. everything's <laughs> going to change. Every, yeah. You know, this is, this is, nothing will be the same, um, because I knew what the commitment involved was. So... I was apprehensive, but in the end, I, I went along with it. And, uh, wow. Yeah. And it is quite a commitment, isn't it? I, I was in uh, Bradford City Centre yesterday. We, we had a book table, and I was speaking to a guy who was married to a Jehovah's Witness lady. And I asked him why he wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. And he said, because it takes too much commitment. 
He said, I, I like my golf too much. That's what his words were to me. But so, yeah. but you ended up getting involved and, and joining the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes. So you, you became baptized Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, we did. Wow. And, and so how did things change for you as a family then? And how did Jason change, Jenny? Uh, for well, as a family, we we obviously we spent more time as a family. In one sense, um, we did we did everything together as a family. Jason was well, he, he turned into the husband that I've kind of been searching for. So, you know, he was he he was the man that that I hoped for in a husband. Um, so yeah, everything was going really well. I mean, we we did we spent time with other um, Jehovah's Witness families, so um, we got obviously to know everybody, and it it was just it, it it's just like one big family when obviously when participating, put yourself right in the center. Um, it's like everything, isn't it? You put yourself in the center, and it just you just. Wow. You just get engulfed in the whole thing and it's just your life. And so this is interesting again, isn't it? Because you prayed for God to help out of desperation. <laughs> There's a knock on the door and you, you hear this fairly often, don't you, amongst people? You know, they'll say, well, you know, I was, I was searching, I was desperate. I was, I, I shouted out to God and there was a knock at the door and it was the, the Jehovah's Witness or the Mormons or somebody. But you must have thought, because it changed Jason, um, into the man you wanted him to be, the husband you wanted him to be, you must have thought this was God at work. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I honestly did. Um, and, I, and I just left the whole family, the, the whole ethos of the Jehovah's Witnesses. It was, everything was just, at that time, was really, really good. It was, it was a pleasure to kind of be part of all of that. And what about for you then, Jason? How how did it affect you signing up fully and getting involved with the Jehovah's Witnesses? I'm I'm an all or nothing guy, you know. I'm either <laughs> in or I'm not in. And if I'm in, I I throw my whole self into it. So I just got completely involved. Um, I think within three years, I was a ministerial servant. They were short. What, what, what's a ministerial servant, Jason? Oh, Just explain. Uh, thank you. Right. Okay. So um, it's equivalent within church environment of a deacon. So they have certain responsibilities within the um, kingdom hall, which is mm -hmm. their meeting place. Um, so an elder is slightly higher, has a, a, a greater role, and they're the two main sort of uh, male roles as well, not mm -hmm. female. So, yeah, so that and then I was being groomed to become a, an elder and the responsibilities would involve preaching from the front, um, shepherding, count, which is counselling people um, and just taking on roles of um, leadership. So, so, yeah, I was I was moving forward in all of that. Uh, we were responsible for what, what then was the book study. So a book study was on a Tuesday. They would have a, a, a Jehovah's Witness or a Watchtower uh, book, which you would go through as a group with uh, questions and answers. And uh, I used to lead that and led that for, for many years. And, and you obviously had how many children at the time you were in the Jehovah's Witnesses? Um, by the time we would finished, we had four, three boys and a girl. And how old were they while you were in the JWs? I mean, how did it affect them? Did it affect them? Um, yeah, I mean, we obviously when we first went along, um, Jacob would have been a year and a half year old, and Jordan was literally like a two week old baby. So, you know, we, had, we just had the two of them to start off with. Um, so, they kind of, that was all they knew, really. That was their life. Mm. And so, that would have meant for them as well as for you um not celebrating birthdays christmas things like yeah. that and yeah. were, were they okay with that or was that difficult for them um they were okay with it what we what we used to do was go out um 
we would go out in the January sales and we would just buy, buy them, take them to Toys R Us or somewhere. And we would have like a, a massive present giving day and we would just spoil them, I mm. suppose. Um, I know that other Jehovah's Witnesses used to have like a gift day on their wedding anniversary as well. So, um, yeah, we just we just used to, I think they liked the fact that they could have presents mm. and they didn't have to wait for them. You know? mm. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting for the kids. Yeah. Um, so you, you are Jehovah's Witnesses. You're doing everything that Jehovah's Witnesses are doing and that people are familiar with, the door knocking and everything. Um, very active, very busy. Did you have, during that period of time you were with them, did you have any doubts? Did you ever sort of think, is this true or isn't it true? Or were you always fully convinced it was right? Um, I honestly confess that the first time I ever went out knocking on a door, my first thoughts was, I hope that anybody that I know can't see me. And, and I was like, what am I doing? Mm. Um, they were my first thoughts. And as time went on, people would say to me, you know, if I'd say, oh, you know, what are you doing this weekend or what, what you're up to? And they'd say, I'm doing so-and-so. And, -so. and i will say, oh, I, I can't do that. And they'd say, well, why not? Why are you allowing somebody to tell you what to do? Mm. And that used to rattle around in my mind a lot. Mm. Um, and I, I think these little gems you can mm. hang on to. And then they kind of build up and build up, don't they, into a mm. big, a massive mm. gem. <laughs> and it comes out. <laughs> yeah. What about for you, Jason? Um, I mean, a Jehovah's Witness, if they're honest, is waiting eagerly for Armageddon. Yeah. Armageddon is going to bring in the Paradise Earth. The Paradise Earth will bring in a whole new order, and you are going to be top of the tree. You know, you're going to get the house you want, the land you want. Everything's going to be perfect. You're not going to die. You know, death will be gone and you'll live eternally on this paradise earth. So everything is geared to this paradise earth. And with each passing year, it gets harder because mm. you're, you're striving mm. and it is striving. It's working hard yeah. five days a week, what, well, seven days a week to please Jehovah and please his organization. And, and by that, I mean the Watchtower the Bible and the Tract Society, the, really the two are synonymous. And um, you get tired. I mean, some some can, you know, if you're doing it habitually, you just get used to it. But but you still also get tired because it's self effort. Yeah. Mm. And I think the, um, I think that I think for me the, looking back, the worst thing was there were no Christians that I met, or only well, say couple, who really challenged me um, as to my faith. Uh, one was a Pentecostal lady. She simply said she'd been to the Kingdom Hall and there was no Holy Spirit, which, um, again, is a, is a phrase that some will be uh, understand or some won't. But uh, that bothered me, what that meant. And then there was a street preacher who um, had said to me, um, he said, I'll pray you find the real Jesus. So there was a few things. Mm -hmm. But I guess I guess really what bothered us as, as time went on was um the way that people began around us to be treated and i think for me personally i felt that it was um it's very there's there's no voice you don't have a voice you know um it is top down hierarchical and it's just jump and jump um and there's no room there for any um questioning no room for any it's just it's just really tough. Um, and I think a lot struggle with that. Some, some play the game where there'll be Jehovah's Witnesses at Kingdom Hall and then just do their own thing. Yeah, like double lives. Double lives. But yeah. we weren't like that. We were, we were fully sold into this. So um, it just got harder and harder. And we saw people marginalised yeah. um, for not being active, mm -hmm. families, children. Yeah. So as a Jehovah's Witness, do you ever feel like you you have a relationship with God? Do you feel like you know God or or feel safe as a Jehovah's Witness that, that you will survive this impending Armageddon? Did you ever feel 
secure I, in any way? I, I was just thinking when Jason was saying all that, all the all the things that you go through, all the things that you do on a weekly basis, knocking on doors and everything, the the whole of the time, it's for a maybe. It's not a sealed deal. It's for a maybe. I kind of, you know, it's not till you kind of come out and then you look back in that you realise it was for a maybe. Um, and even when we used to pray, it didn't ever feel, I don't know, I used to pray, but I I'd, I'd often used to think that God wasn't listening or going to answer my prayers. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, so Jehovah of the Watchtower is a very distant God. And there's no relationship with his son because that's not allowed because Jesus is obviously in their theology and their teachings is simply an angel. Um, so the relationship has to be with Jehovah, which is for them the divine name of God. Mm -hmm. But he's so distant, so remote. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the prayers are generic and they're just repeated. And a lot of them are simply uh, Jehovah, we pray for your organization. Um, so there's a lot of directed prayer towards the movement itself. So the very personal relationship you would expect with God is not there. So all that time and all that effort, there's, there's no security, no assurance. And no. nothing. No. I mean, what did, what did you think of... of, of you mentioned you, you met a, a few Christians, not many maybe really interacted with you, but what, what as a Jehovah's Witness, did you think of, of Christians and the, and the church? Uh, um, I, I felt that they were apostate, that they had lost their way um, centuries ago, and that Jehovah's Witnesses were like a restored church, and that they'd got the pure doctrines that had been lost. Mm -hmm. um, we felt we were the only ones evangelizing. Uh, I had no understanding of church mission, that there'd been all these missions. Uh, um, I felt that we were the only ones using the divine name. You know, Trinity, of the, uh, which is this uh, concept of God being um, three in one, which is a, a Christian doctrine, that was rejected. So, you know, you can, just with that doctrine alone, you can erase all of, all of Christendom. So... We felt they were apostate um, and uh, we could point to pagan images and all that sort of thing. So there's, there's, we didn't think there was anything else. Now, there's so many more things I, I could ask you and we could talk about lots of things, but maybe some questions will come in about some of the other things. But we need to just move it on a little bit then. So as committed yeah, sure. members of Jehovah's Witnesses, um, what changed? You've, you've hinted at a few sort of issues that you're beginning to have. So what? What caused you to, to really begin to doubt the Jehovah's Witnesses and start to make your way out? I think for me it was, I think obviously because men, uh, women are more emotional than men. Um, I think it was just the way that, pe that individuals were treated. Um, just the, it was almost like a, a conditional love. Um, people were not given the time that they needed, they weren't shown the love that they needed. They were um, thrown out or thrown out of the organisation when actually that's not what they needed. They needed they needed love. They needed God's love. Um, and I, I mean, <laughs> I just one of my best friends was treated very badly, and um, it made me very bitter it, it made me very very bitter so I think it was it was the starting of the Lord really just showing us that that's not where he wanted us anymore yeah you're feeling the same Jason uh yeah I was just completely exhausted I was just desperate for Armageddon for this paradise and uh you know as the as the months and years rolled on it just I was just exhausted. I think I had a nervous breakdown and I needed time out of the whole thing. But also I saw what Jen saw um, and I did address it with the um, the elders and they have a like an overseer for the area called a circuit overseer. I did meet with him. 
and I, and I expected some, you know, positive feedback. But I was told um, that if I wasn't happy with the way things were, that I, I should step down from my position. So, um, yeah, that was really painful. It felt like I'd been used for all that time and and then sort of just tossed to one side. So we both of us agreed to take time out. And so we stepped away from the whole movement um, just to try and, I don't know, regain some normality. We were just on a treadmill and we needed time out. Our eldest son struggled. Um, he used to go along with my mum and dad. Um, that's where we were at at that, at that time. So yeah. you, you, you were with them for around about 10 years, but it took another sort of maybe four years for you to fully yeah. break free. And, and yeah. many, many people have come out of groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses and then they, they just go off into atheism and, and just suddenly find freedom and they're like, woohoo, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but for you guys, you, you've ended up still hanging on to God and, and becoming Christian. So how did that come about for you? I think we both needed time out. We both needed to be kind of in the wilderness a bit to to try and like work it all out it was um obviously leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses is very painful because we had then no friends <laughs> so um we decided to spend more time as a family um with the children I mean Jordan and Joel the two younger boys daughter wasn't so bad because she was quite young um they were quite happy that we had actually left because they weren't treated very nicely <laughs> at the kingdom or by some of the elders. So um, obviously there was issues with the eldest son. Um, so there was a lot of there was a lot of bridges we needed to kind of build, especially with our family, to try and um, regain some of those years back, really, which which was really really hard. But we needed that time out and. There was, there came a point where I just personally myself, I just felt that I needed that. I just felt that the Lord was calling me, that I needed to spend time with God. And he did that <laughs> in some strange ways. One of them was by going to see a faith healer, which sounds really bizarre, but it was actually um, so many years to the day of the car accident that I had when I was 16. And um, Jesus was showing me that he was real and that he was alive and that he exerts power. And I went to see him and I had problems with my shoulder and my arm. Um, and it was, it, was, it was an absolute miracle because he showed me through that, um, through the Holy Spirit, that he was alive. And that was kind of the start for me of my walk, mm. which was amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. And what about for you, Jason? It was far more cerebral. My, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would imagine it would be, yeah. <laughs> it was, um, I, I needed the time out, but then there came a point where I wanted to check again. I wanted to go back over the ground I'd trod. I wanted to be more objective and look again at what I'd been taught, look at the Bible again. Um, that old preacher who said, I pray you find the real Jesus. That was really my prayer. Mm. I didn't know who I was praying to or whether there was even a God, but I began to study and use various translations. And uh, I, I started in Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and I realized that Jesus, the Jesus I'd been taught, was not the Jesus of Scripture. And slowly, God, um, I believe, revealed himself directly through the Scriptures. And um, and we both eventually came to faith. But I think for those Jehovah's Witnesses that just um, throw it all in and become atheists, um, I think that's just a knee-jerk reaction to being hurt. Mm. You know, a lot of the forums out there are very hate-filled. Yeah. And um, it's very, I mean, I've been on them and they just shoot me down. There's you know, one who's religious is, is crazy. So um, unfortunately, they haven't given their, the, themselves time to actually really look into it and i'd really encourage those who you know in that pace of of 
anger and bitterness to it, it's nothing to do with the bible or god it's it's a movement that has made them feel like that and so being objective and looking again i think really um that's what i need to do and had to do um and then we we both came to faith fantastic now would you say that where you're at now as Christians is very different to where you're at as Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, we talked a few a few moments ago about when you're with the Jehovah's Witnesses, lots of effort, striving, tired, no assurance, all this kind of stuff. Is that still how you feel, or has things changed for all in in, in terms of all those things for you guys? Wow, um, it's completely the opposite. Every day is a pleasure, it's a joy. Um, just knowing that, you know, that that Christ has given his life for me. Sorry. <laughs> and that he loves us more than anything in the whole wide world as individuals. Um, and just because of that, everything that we do, we do for love for him. So it's a complete reversal, absolutely complete. Yeah, yeah. Our motivation is love. Yeah. That he first loved us, whereas previously it had been a goal, working towards a goal of, of, of saving our own skins, um, whereas now it's a, it's a response to God's love that we serve. Um, obviously, we are busy. And uh, we still need time out, but there's not the pressure. No. And the assurance of our eternity is there. We, we, as the Bible explains, we're saved by grace alone through Christ alone. Grace is that um, undeserved love of God, something that we don't deserve that he offers as a gift. And, you know, once we grasp that, I mean, it, it just floored us that, that, that the God of the universe would would offer um, eternity through faith. Yeah. It's just, and uh, yeah, so life is completely different. I'm, I love, I, you know, I'm, I'm still cerebral. I love the word. I've, I've done my theology degrees. <laughs> I've just finished my MA um, and uh, I wanna, you know, I teach. So yeah, life is good. And we now have um, an eternity to look forward to yeah. with Jesus. I think, I think the difference is, is like being excited for each new day mm. whereas as a jehovah's witness it was kind of you got to the point where you didn't want to get up the next day yeah I mean, <laughs> you know I mean, everything lot. was a, like drudgery yeah. it was just so hard work yeah. whereas yeah. as now we've we've got something to live for yeah there's, a, there's a high suicide rate within within the cults it's been amazing to hear your story. We, we need to sort of draw it to a close, really. But yeah. just the transformation um, is just fantastic to know that it's just about trusting in what Christ has done. There's nothing we can yeah. do. It's not about our efforts, yeah. our striving, because that does wear us out and gets yeah. us nowhere. But our faith in Christ is, is, is what saves us. It's, that's all we need. He did all the work for us. Yeah. And like you say, we yeah. just then live out of that um and, yeah. and work from that position of salvation and safety uh, it's yeah. been wonderful to speak yeah. to you both jason jenny there's going to be lots of questions for you i'm sure um later things i've not even touched upon but may god bless you both in uh, in your ministry there in uh, lincolnshire and all that he has for you in the future thank you for being with us <laughs>